Welcome back to Sutra South Africa. I'm Nikki Nash as always and today you guys join me in this beautiful Mazda 3. I am in the top of the range model. So this is the 2 litre Estina automatic. Um, top of the range model within the Mazda 3 range. There are four Mazda 3 vehicles. There's the Active, Dynamic, Individual and the Estina, the top of the range. So the first three I mentioned, um, they, produce, they are powered by 1.5 litre um, naturally aspirated engine. This is a 2 litre naturally aspirated engine. Um, we're going to speak more about that, but um, just to get it out of the way, um, I like the front of this vehicle the most. Um, but we speak. But before we speak more about the car, we need to speak about Change Cars. What is Change Cars? Change Cars is, a, is an online website where whereby you can look at buying vehicles, you can look at going through vehicles. If you're looking to buy a vehicle, just go on Change Cars or CODZA. There's over 15,000 vehicles there. Um, you will find the vehicle you're looking for and more especially change cars work with only manufacturer approved dealerships you know what that means right um chances of you getting scammed is zero um but we'll speak more about change cars later in the video but for now let's look at the mazda 3. <music> What do I think about the vehicle? Um, definitely, we know how we did the side. You speak about the look of the car, exterior, interior, the drive, the things I like, would I recommend it? So, five things. So, look of the car, I like the exterior, um, I like the front of the vehicle. Um, the rear of the vehicle, I've seen the Mazda 3 before I had it on test. So, all the time when I used to see it on the road, I didn't necessarily like the back of the car. Um, but now, because I had a chance to live with it, um, I don't want to say I like the back, but I got used to it. I didn't see it as um, not eye catching anymore, but what I can tell you during the day, the back is not my favorite part. But at night, the way those lights look at night, that definitely is my favorite. My favorite at the back, I do like it at the back, but the front is definitely my favorite. There's no debate about that. The front must have knocked it out of the park. Um, this vehicle, even the interior, what I do like about the interior, the interior finish is just amazing. The, the soft touch on the doors, the soft touch on the dash, on the dash right here. So there's there's leather trimming on the top, but there's two, two type of leather trimming, if that makes sense. So here on the top, like just above the steering wheel, it's hard. But here, when you go down just below to the um, the infotainment system, it's it's softer. So I like how Mazda paid attention to that. The steering wheel, steering wheel, I like it. It feels nice. Um, it is nice and slim. It's not thick. Um, I do like the steering wheel. The interior of the vehicle is just amazing. I like how they've kept the physical buttons for the camera control, so I control everything physically with buttons i do not have to go into the infotainment system like how new cars are nowadays and it's something i really don't like but in this one you don't go through that i like that the most and it's just the seats as well the seats are very nice they feel amazing so the seats on my seat the driver's seat is electronically operated it has memory seats as well one and two uh, mine is currently set for one because i am the driver for this week definitely so it's just set to one but otherwise the leg room at the back practicality is just amazing um, it's more than enough space the car from the outside it does look slightly smaller than the previous generation but as it looks smaller the space in the rear wasn't compromised which is which is a good thing um, i like that about the vehicle now speaking about the drive and that has to be the most important thing about this vehicle this car has a two liter naturally aspirated engine producing 121 kilowatts 330 newton meters of torque and what do i think about that i personally do not like the engine more per se because this car is not turbocharged if this vehicle was turbocharged with a two liter engine this car would be perfect um it's literally when i say a perfect car this is what a perfect car is but with one fault the fact that it doesn't have a turbo the turbo was going to make this car a bit more refined um, not noisy because it is noisy especially if you're pulling like that it's noisy but otherwise when you're driving slowly like how i've been <laughs> in the beginning of the video it's fine but when you do want that bit of push it does get noisy and the, and then another irritating thing is the fact that it is noisy but it's not going anywhere meaning it's not getting to speed quick it's a two liter yes but from robot to robot, um, like even short streets, you want that extra pull, extra punch quickly. It won't get you to 80 or 100 that quick compared to, to turbocharged vehicle. But once you're on the highway and it gets to speed, that's where you feel I'm in a two liter. Because once you once you get to speed with this vehicle, it's just fine. Um, but the, the lack of turbo is what really 
does get to me and more so because the fuel efficiency of this vehicle right so when this vehicle came to me so what i do with these vehicles i i don't reset anything when they give it to me and then i'll see what the car's averaging and then i'll drive and then that'll be my combined fuel efficiency of the vehicle then i'll do reset it and then i'll do a highway one and then i'll do a highway and ct of my own so with this vehicle it came averaging around eight around 8.5 uh, my left hill, I drove it just like that. I didn't reset anything. Um, it was playing around 8.5 to 9. Um, that's mixed with a bit of acceleration pulls just to feel the vehicle per se, you know what I mean? So, later on, um, I went on the highway. Well, not later on, yesterday basically. I went on the highway and then I reset everything. I put cruise control 110. So from Pretoria to Joburg, you're looking like another 50 k's. So 50 k's on the highway, constant 110 not decelerating or accelerating constant 110 i was averaging 6.7 so highway cruising this vehicle will give you what you want so when i jumped off the highway i was driving like i'm driving right now and i was averaging 7.8 right now i am averaging 7.2 you know so this vehicle you drive it properly the fuel efficiency will be good but if you accelerate a bit here and there it won't be as as enjoyable or the fuel efficiency can easily go up to nine but something that also plays with my mind a bit as much as it's saying i'm averaging 7.2 in my mind i have a feeling it's averaging higher than that i just feel like it's telling me i'm averaging 7.2 reason being i'm averaging 7.2 i've averaged 7.2s in other vehicles but the needle the petrol needle doesn't move as quick in this vehicle i'm averaging 7.2 for the past day but the needle or uh, the petrol needle has been moving rather quickly um, if that makes sense so uh, it's a mismatch for me it's a mismatch the fuel efficiency what it's telling me doesn't match how the needle is moving because the needle is moving um, quite quickly so the fuel efficiency of this vehicle do I like it no I do not like it I only like it when I'm on the highway because it gives you what you want um, but when you're in city no and that's because lack of turbo the car is asking too much from the two liter engine and stop and go movement stop and go traffic so i don't like that about the vehicle uh, but we'll speak more about what i don't like about the vehicle just now but i need to speak about what the car has i, I missed a few things in terms of what the car has so this car <coughs> this car has built-in navigation um the top of the range the one i'm in right now it has built-in navigation it has heads-up display lovely heads-up display i love it you can adjust the height um depending on your sitting position i do like that about the vehicle this car also has a bose sound system and how does the bose sound system sound amazing um i think it's one of the vehicles i've had where the sound system sounded really good like amazing it's definitely i think number one or two um it's up there with the peugeot 3008 that i had last year um, but it's definitely up there that car this car sounds amazing i love the bose sound system i love i love how it is to be here this car has cruise control, just normal cruise control. Um, I wish it had adaptive cruise control um, because this car is priced at 538,000 Rand. For, for that money, I, I think Mazda could have um, fitted um, adaptive cruise control. Um, or if it doesn't have, if well, it doesn't have adaptive cruise control, at least give me front sensors. This car has a long, a long hood or a long bonnet, um, as we say here. So. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have front sensors. So if you're not used to vehicles with a long bonnet, you can definitely be hitting things you don't think you should be hitting. Um, but otherwise, the vehicle is perfect. Um, but we need to speak about the things I like, the things I don't like. And you know how we do it this side. We start with the bad. And the bad. Mm. Number one is definitely the fact that this car doesn't have a turbo. Um, it's a two liter, you ask him. It's a two liter and a small hat the car is asking too much from the engine so that affects the drive the enjoyment of a car and the fuel efficiency of the vehicle and speaking of fuel efficiency that goes to point number two of mine why i don't like well, the second thing i don't like i mean is the fuel efficiency of this vehicle reason being um i struggled to get around 500 550 k's on one tank I struggled um, and when I say I struggled I really did struggle I think I did 490 something and then I was approaching empty and then I had to top up um, which is something I, I never expected something I never wanted um, in this vehicle so I don't like that about the fuel efficiency it could be better but I get it because it doesn't have a turbo there's a Mazda 3 turbo overseas but we don't get in South Africa Mazda I say we need to do something bring the turbo to South Africa or collaborate something with this vehicle so that it can be perfect because literally this vehicle is just a perfect all-rounder but 
we'll speak more about that at the recommendations so that's the second thing i don't like third thing i don't like i don't necessarily have the third thing i don't like um onto the good what do i like i like the look of the car in front one i like the look of the car and look at the feel of the car inside that's two and the third thing i like about the car is definitely the the Bose sound system. Oh, the Bose sound system sounds amazing. Um, it's definitely the third thing I like. And now moving on to three, th no, not three things. Moving on to, would I buy the car? Do I like the car? Would I recommend the car? So I just, see, I'm doing a U-turn and there's something there that I don't want to hit. But if I had front sensors, I would know if I'm going to hit it or not. So yeah. So do I like the car? Would I buy the car? Would I recommend the car? One, do I like the car? Yes. Two, would I buy the car? Yes, but no. I'll tell you why. Three, would I recommend the car? Definitely. One, like it. Two, would I buy the car? Yes or no. Why I would buy the car is a perfect all-rounder um, and for value for money. Because you're looking at 540,000 rand for this vehicle. Value for money and being a Mazda vehicle. So you know that you won't, you won't have to worry about um, in terms of maintenance, in terms of... It's not an unreliable car. Mazdas are known for being reliable. So yes, I would buy it. When I say no, why I wouldn't buy it, but my no right now doesn't really exist. And let me tell you why. Because those cars, competition, closest competition for this car would be the likes of a Ford Focus, right? But Ford Focus, the new Ford Focus isn't coming to South Africa. So we look at, okay, there's VW. Okay, VW Golf 8, TSI. We look at that, but that vehicle isn't coming to South Africa. So then you get a Mazda and then you're like, okay, so what does a Mazda compete with? And then for me, that's where I'd be like, I'll definitely, now I'm looking at, it's just the Mazda, um, because the main competition is not there. There's the Megane, uh, Reynolds Megane. I haven't driven the Reynolds Megane, so I can't say I'll take the Reynolds Megane over this, but I know, I think even if when I do drive the, Re the Reynolds Megane, I don't think I'll buy that over this, you know? Um, as much as that would have a turbo, but this doesn't, I still would sacrifice to take this. So my only option, I personally, if I would not to buy this car, I'd be looking at jumping into a Golf 8 TSI, but we don't get that vehicle. And I'm left with what? This vehicle. So I definitely do buy this vehicle. If I'm looking for um, a hatch this big, um, I definitely would look to buy this vehicle. Um, would I recommend the car? Definitely. Um, the type of people I recommend the cars to, you know, not necessarily first time buyers, but someone that had a smaller vehicle than this, namely like a Mazda 2, but you want something bigger. But you don't want the CX-5, um, but you don't, or you, or you don't like a CX-30, for example. CX-30 is just slightly this, but slightly bigger, but slightly higher and shorter. But you don't want a CX-30, but you want something bigger than a Mazda 2. I'll definitely be like, look, you're in the Mazda family. There's a Mazda 3. If it's someone that is not in the Mazda family, but has had a small car, but wants something bigger in terms of a hatch, this would be the one I'd recommend. I'd be like, no, look, as much as moving into SUVs you can't take away the fact that there are hatches that can give you the best of both like this it has the space it has the space it drives nicely and value for money considering how much cars are paying for this car won't do that so definitely I would I would definitely recommend the car hey don't jump the stop sign there so definitely I would recommend this vehicle and from such a South Africa I'm Nikki Nash and I've summed up the Mazda 3 nicely for you guys. You guys will tell me what you think about the vehicle in the comment section down below. And also please check out Change Cars. They they also you out. You're looking to buy a vehicle, you're looking to buy a Mazda 3. Go to change go to change cars and see and type in Mazda 3, your spec, your price. If you can't afford a Mazda 3 above 100000 put the max max uh, max price 400000 and then it'll filter the price for you up until 400,000 but otherwise I'm Nikki Nash I'm gonna have to end it um it was lovely seeing you guys or you guys lovely you guys seeing me but um I'll see you soon after this we have da -da -da -da, we're going to festival festival of motoring so yeah see you on to that see you on that video and yeah keep it locked I'm signing out <music>